Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I have here Mr. Adam Olet, And we're going to talk about something called heart math and a few other things today and get to know Adam and what he's all about. And hopefully we can inspire some of you and motivate some of you to, number one, be a better person. And number two, pursue the things in life that you really want to do. So Adam, I'm, I'm going to hand it off to you. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Kyle, thanks for having me on. I, I love the idea of your podcast and what you've been doing. Uh, I'm not sure I can raise up to the comedic level of Tommy Chong, which was your last <laughs> guest, but I'm going to do my best. Maybe a little bit boring compared to him, but man, we were just talking about him before we started recording here and, and what a comedic genius. I mean, grew up laughing at him. So, uh, uh, today we're going to talk a, a, about the power of the heart, but who am I? Who, who am I, this big, bald dude? Uh, I'm about 6'9", 300 pounds, so people see me and they think I played college football or I did play basketball in college, but I was an attorney for 20 years, and over the time I was practicing law, I wasn't happy, and as a result, I began searching for information that could help me be a better person, uh, be a better lawyer. And at 19, my mother sent me some Tony Robbins CDs. Uh, I think there were tapes, actually. <laughs> it's going to date us both, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> she sent me some Tony Robbins tapes. And I started listening to those, and I became kind of a searcher and then a researcher. And what I like to call myself is a student of life. Just wanted to figure out as much as I could about life and how it works and uh, the spiritual, spiritual aspects of life, my connection with source, whatever that means to you. Um, and ultimately, we're not going to get into that today, right, Kyle? We, we've talked, at, we're not going to talk about religion or politics. This is right. not anything that we want to do. <laughs> so, but, but I became a seeker. And ultimately, I found some methods to really uh, connect with my heart. And we're going to talk today about the power of the heart. Part of it's going to be a little bit about heart math, because in 2017, I realized that uh, heart math was certifying trainers to teach heart math. And so a little bit about my background, um, early on as a lawyer, even in law school, I was uh, having struggles with all the stress. And today we are bombarded with stress uh, and COVID has put us in a place where a lot of us, you know, don't know whether we're coming or going, but law school, I started having a lot of stress. And then once I got out into the practice of law, it was just a bombardment of all the time, just anxiety all day, every day, couldn't sleep all that great, was gaining weight. And to me, you know, gaining weight wasn't that big of a deal because I've got this big frame. And so people would look at me, oh, you look like a football player. No, I'm fat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so ultimately something had to change. And so I was about three years in and I started developing heart arrhythmias mm. and the doctors thought it was a problem with the heart, but ultimately, you know, down the road, I figured out it was a problem with my adrenal glands and the adrenal glands were firing off cortisol and adrenaline for no reason sending me into some panic attacks because it's like what's going on in the body and heading yeah. to the doctors and the hospitals and, and the you know the doctors were trying to treat the heart but ultimately it was a sign that I was pushing too hard and I knew at that point in my life I had to do something to shift to change to start to look at stress differently to start to look at life differently because if I didn't I was heading for uh, a nervous breakdown, not just these panic attacks. These panic attacks ultimately to me are all this stress that we push down and we repress and we suppress in the body yeah. and the body's trying to let go of it and we don't know how to let go of it. And so I started learning how to meditate. I started doing all these things to help myself, but I realized this was all stuff after the fact, right? This was stuff I was doing at night. And now here's this big six, nine guy doing yoga kind of funny to, to, to watch my sister and her boyfriend came over unexpectedly to my my house one night and I'm here I am doing yoga in the living room they laughed their butts off it was it was comical but still yoga was something I was doing meditation after the fact and I'm like 
I really want to find something that can help me look at stress differently, help me to have a different perspective on it so I can stop stress before it occurs. And so one of the reasons we're going to talk about power of the heart and, and what I like to call stress less, I've created a course just for attorneys and I'm going to flip it into a course for anybody. But right now I'm focused on attorneys because attorneys lives are, whew, it's difficult to be a lawyer. I mean, a lot of people don't like lawyers and I understand why I don't particularly like some lawyers either. And practicing law is difficult because you have to deal with all these other lawyers. But mm. I uh, picked up a book, Heart Math, it was called. And um, Doc Childress is, is the guy that founded Heart Math. And I read it and I was like, this is part of my solution. And over the years, I, I credit Heart Math with uh, saving me from a heart attack uh, or worse. Wow. And I started implementing Heart Math. Uh, it was probably it could have been 18 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And I used it and I used it to calm and center myself to be in a place where I didn't let stress affect me like it did. And so when I went to a Greg Braden workshop here in Asheville, North Carolina, he was teaching heart math stuff. And, and he said, oh, you know, I'm certified heart math trainer. I said, all right, I need to go and figure out how I can do the same thing because I always wanted to share some of these tips and tools and techniques that heart math has but you can't because it's their information. So I traveled to Washington, D.C. in 2017 and became a certified trainer and in heart math. And um, one of the things that really astounded me over the past three, four years in teaching it to, to my consulting clients one on one uh, is that it's, you're able to ground yourself so quickly. And uh, if you go to my heart math page, which we'll put the link uh, up Yes. with the episode, you can take a look at the heart rhythms and how different the heart rhythms are for a normal person that is um, just living their lives. The heart rhythm is erratic. It's all over the place. But then when you get into this place of coherence is what heart math calls it, the heart rhythm steady out mm -hmm. and it, it's just profound work. And so after I moved to North Carolina, I decided that I didn't want to practice law anymore. I didn't want to take another bar exam. That was for sure. <laughs> and I wanted to take all the stuff that I had learned as a lawyer, uh, the, the life stuff and start to share it with people. And so when you and I talked about what topic I would cover today, because there's a multitude of things I talk about, especially with business, but you're not a business podcast, Kyle. So <laughs> you want to help people and bring a positive message out there. I wanted to share uh, how very powerful the heart is. And we'll get into that in a second. Any questions before we jump into that? Yeah. Can you explain exactly what heart math is? Sure. Heart math is a company that's been around for 30 years and ultimately they have 400 peer review studies that they've done. And it's, it's taking the metaphysical woo woo stuff mm -hmm. and putting it into, uh, people that got connected to these, you know, probes and all this stuff over the years. And they figured out how to sync up the heart and the brain together, which the heart is always communicating with the brain. But the problem is that we shut it off. We're always, always up in our head. And when you're in your head, you're usually coming from uncertainty and fear-based thoughts. And so they have created these tools and techniques that I can only teach live. Um, which I do, I'm starting in January, I'm doing uh, one heart math at least a month to start introducing that hour long first workshop to people so that they can start to connect with their heart in a different way. So it's science based techniques that help slow us down a little bit, connect the heart and the brain, where we can become more resilient. And resilience is a, a word that's used quite a bit in today's world, but resilience as far as heart math is concerned is the capacity to prepare for, recover from, and adapt in the face of stress, challenge, or adversity. So the research that they've done um, is peer reviewed. And one of the reasons I gravitated towards it was because I was a left brain analytical attorney. You know, there's not a lot of creativity that happens when you practice law, even though there's a few lawyers that tell me there is, and then I tell them, no, you're full of it. <laughs> and they say, yeah, you're probably, you're probably right, Adam. Um, but I, I like the fact that they're doing studies on the heart and the brain and their, you know, uh, Harvard business review has a study. There's over 400 studies over the past 300 years. So it's science-based. It's not just the metaphysical stuff that some people have trouble connecting with. And I'm out there teaching law firms and lawyers, this in big ways, 
they'll listen to science-based stuff, but they will not listen to metaphysical stuff, which I've, you know, studied a lot about over the years as well. So now can I assume that would also help people like myself who suffer from insomnia? Because, uh, you know, trying to shut my brain down in the middle of the night and get back to sleep without the aid of some kind of medication is just virtually impossible. Yeah, this is a, a an endemic that we have as a society, especially in the United States. But, you know, I've, I do uh, coaching consulting with people in Europe and and have talked to people from Africa and Asia in some of the consulting that I do. And this is something that is a, a human problem. Mm. Uh, and yes, this is something that can totally help you. And this is how I was able to let go of insomnia many years ago is basically slow the breathing down. And if you go to the website, uh, adamalette.com backslash HM for heart math, there is a video from heart math on that page that will teach you what's called the quick coherence method. Um, that's a heart math video right from them. And ultimately, uh, Kyle, go there and check that video out or just search for quick coherence heart math online and you'll find this very simple introductory breathing technique that we, you know, all these certified trainers in heart math teach first and foremost. And what you're doing is basically connecting with your heart space, slowing your breathing down. And what you're ultimately doing, which is very powerful, is you're getting out of your head. This yeah. is the key. Your problem, my problem, and everybody's problem that have trouble sleeping. Now, look, my wife can fall asleep standing up. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't have this problem. And it's really yeah. irritating. I can tell you that it's irritating to me because it's like she can sleep at least eight hours a night every night. No questions asked. Her mother, sisters, they all can do it. And I'm like, um, what happened here with me? So, but yeah. the challenge for us, the, the ones that are in their head, which is what you are, and I've had the same challenge, is to shut that down. Uh, sometimes takes an act of God, but it really isn't that difficult. You just don't have the tools and techniques to be able to start the process of it. And so this quick coherence method is the beginning of that process, and that might work for you alone. So quieting the mind is a function of your attention. Here's the key. I've studied a lot about being present, present moment. They call it mindfulness, but it really has nothing to do with the mind. It's about quieting the mind. And when I found heart math and started to really learn how you can quiet the mind, that technique is a very simple way to stop the thought and dive into the heart space. But here's the key. The, the interesting piece about how our minds work is that it's like a hamster in a wheel, just mm -hmm. goes and goes and goes. The one thing that people don't want to do usually is incorporate something new and make it a habit. This is a challenge for humanity, right? I mean, to, this is one of the big things Tony Robbins talks about in all of his workshops is, is to direct your attention. And if your mind is racing like a hamster in a wheel, you're not directing your attention. You're allowing whatever comes into your consciousness and that's in the brain to run you. And so the practice of being more present, which is what this starts you doing, takes you out of the mind and somewhere else. And if you can direct your attention somewhere else, which for heart math, it's in the heart space, you can begin to quiet that mind. And it's difficult at first. I started meditating 20 plus years ago. And I remember very clearly that sitting in, in my uh, spare bedroom saying, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this today. I'm really going to do this. And the thoughts just keep coming. But little by little, every single day, I, I would just get better at it. There's a, a Japanese principle called Kaizen, and it's, it's, it's taught in Japan, but ultimately it was one of the reasons that uh, the Japanese cars were so much better than the American cars in the 80s and 90s, and kind of still are. Um, everybody's made lots of increase in productivity, and, and the cars are better nowadays. They'll run a lot longer. But Kaizen speaks to small changes that gradually create big shifts as time goes. And so if you can just start with a five minute session of quick coherence and work every day at just creating a new habit, that's what you do. You create a new habit of being able to say, I'm not gonna stay in this hamster wheel mind. I'm gonna 
direct my focus, direct my attention to my heart space, and then focus on the breath. I mean, that's a simple meditation I start with attorneys on is just sit and focus just on breathing in and out. That will assist you to drop out of the, the mind. And but it's a process. It's a process that some people want instantaneous results, right? I mean, we can get food 24 hours a day in most big cities. And, you know, we have access to online shopping all the time. So we're going to deliver it tomorrow. This is the mentality that human beings have, uh, especially in bigger cities. But in general, we just want it today. We want it done. Yep. But this is a process that is not going to, you know, happen instantaneously. Be creating new habits sometimes take months. But when you create that new habit and you're able to now more focus your attention, it's, it's a, a t I hate to say game changer, but it does. It, it changes uh, how you think, how you operate, how you feel, and, and the like. For myself, I always wanted to meditate. And like I say, everything in the world just pops into my head when I'm trying to quiet myself. And I'm like, I, I can't do this. Well, fortunately, I've had people come into my life that uh, they, they have methods that I have applied and it works. Um, they said, just like you, you were talking about the breathing and bring when you take a breath, you you imagine that you're inhaling everything positive that you can. And then when you exhale, you're getting rid of all the negative. Right. And it may sound ridiculous, but it works. And it, meditation has changed my life so much. Um, being somebody that has suffered from depression and anxiety and PTSD for most of my life. Now, if I meditate when I know I'm getting into a stressful situation, it, it, it makes it easier for me to handle it where before I had to take all these medications, blah, 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 blah. And it, if you know my regimen of all those pills I used to take, it is such a relief not to have yeah. to do that anymore. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons I was looking for solutions was I'm, go I'm going to my med uh, general doctor and he's like, well, I think I want to pre uh, prescribe you Xanax. And I'm like, no. No, yeah, I didn't not go in there. Like I didn't want to go there because I had other attorney friends that were on Xanax or friends in general or, you know, Paxil and all these other drugs. And I saw the side effects that were created by these drugs. And I, I didn't want to be in that place to where, oh, we got to slowly take you off this. And then we're going to try something else because nothing lasts forever. Nothing works forever. And I'm like, I didn't want to go there. So I wanted to find some of these solutions that were something I could do. What I was doing was basically taking back my power from the doctors who, you know, we need doctors, right? Oh, of course. And, and, but they aren't trained in the mind-body connection. They're not. Medical science doesn't believe in it. It still pushes back on it. And this is more mind-body connection because ultimately you're focusing your mind and utilize, utilizing your heart and brain in different ways. Now, the, the profoundness of some of these techniques with heart math is I'm able to, to feel my heart, right? Because I could feel those arrhythmias back in the day that when they first started, I was like, oh my God, what is this? I could feel the heart literally start slowing down. And so when you start bringing your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems in line with this slower breath and the focus, feel your heart. And so they have something called inner balance. Um, these Bluetooth connect to your phone, iPad or whatever, and you can track your progress. And so people that I do some of this consulting with, they'll, they'll ask me, how can I take a look to see if I'm making progress to get one of these inner uh, ease uh, devices, and it will show you where you're at. So if you're coherent, which means your mind and your heart is synced up, you're green. If you're kind of in the middle, it'll be blue. If you're not, and you're thinking, it turns red. And so the interesting thing about my practice with that those devices over the years, and I still use them an hour every day, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, is that the moment you drop out of the present moment, bing, it turns red. If you're not focused on your heart, you know, in a place where you can live from there, which most of us can't, but I'm doing a really good job of it after so many years, it'll tell you where you are. And one of the interesting things, I had a guy that wanted me to do one-on-one -on -one heart math with him. And I, I did the first session with him last week. And he goes, Adam, 
and this was a, an attorney that has retired. Thank, thankful for him. He's retired. He said, I wake up in the morning, I have all these negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the power of heart math is I start my day 30 minutes in the morning and I'm, I'm doing some of these uh, higher level techniques to where you're literally creating chemicals in the body that feel good. And what they've, they're starting to show is that that kind of process that heart math has, and there's other types of processes that bring in these kinds of things, but the, when you're focused and you're bringing in um, good feelings, it's a cascade of the chemicals that we really want. Like, aren't we all searching for some joy, some happiness in our lives? I mean, this is what we're all out there trying to do is, is to be happy. Well, what if you could start the day or end the day, whatever you decide to do, and have cascades of those chemicals that feel good on purpose? And when he, I reached out to him uh, yesterday and said, hey, how's it going? And he goes, man, I'm getting up there. My coherence levels are higher, but I'm doing this in the morning and I feel better. Of course, of course. Most of us start our days out in fear mode. Oh my God, what do I have to do today? Worried in, in, in the, the fear mode, right? There's only two emotions, fear and love. That's it. People will question me on that. Well, no, there's other, no, everything's fear or love. That's it. Everything's a subset of those. And most of us live our lives from, fear-based emotions and COVID has really kicked the crap out of us because yeah. this Omicron thing, Omicron, whatever, whatever it's called, there's all this fear. Oh, is this going to be the end? Or now we're starting on a new path. Is this going to be an endemic, which it probably will be from what I'm hearing. It's just going to kind of mutate into something that we have to deal with. Uh, hopefully it's not so deadly, but it's this constant fear of the unknown, that uncertainty part that really delves us into the fear-based emotions. And I try to keep the news off, right? I don't watch myself, <laughs> myself. I don't like watching it, especially nowadays, because it's all sensationalized fear-based stuff. And it only mm -hmm. causes us to live in that mode. I want to feel better. I want to feel good. And that's why I start my day uh, with some of these higher level techniques from heart math, because it actually is creating situations where they're doing studies now. And I alluded to that before they're doing studies now to, to where if you're spending time every day, uh, like bathing in these good emotions, that chemicals, the DHEA, and, and I, there's a list of them that happen that are created in the body, right? The body has its own pharmacy. Yeah. These chemicals can actually heal the telomeres, which are the ends of the DNA, this telomere, the telomeres, once they age far enough, that's why you die of natural causes or heart attacks or whatever. But they're showing now uh, that these cascade of good chemicals can heal the telomeres in your DNA, which to me, I was listening to this at the Greg Braden workshop. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is anti-aging stuff that you don't have to take a pill. It's not a, you know, you want to eat better. You want to make sure you're hydrated and all that stuff. Sure. But this is something that is completely in your control, taking your power back from big pharma, you know, medicine and that that's, you know, you take a pill and, you know, who knows what side effects you're going to have from those pills. So to me, these kinds of things, if you can learn some of this kind of stuff and integrate it in your life and create habits around it, it can only help. Well, a lot of things that people forget is your body is built to fight a lot of these diseases and other things that, that can attack your body. And forgive me if I get the name wrong. I don't, if I think it was Plato that said that your health begins in your spine. And I didn't quite understand what that meant until um, I'll, I'll give you a little testimony here for chiropractors. But my youngest son was born with um, a lot of, uh, of uh, well, he had, uh, he had a problem with his hearing. They said he was deaf in one ear and partially deaf in the other one. Uh, he had a lot of allergies. Just uh, you know, I used to sit underneath a, a tent with him to help him breathe with this wow. machine. I mean, just all these things that was wrong with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met this gentleman who was a chiropractor and I, we were talking about my son and he said, well, let me take a look at him. Mm -hmm. So he straightened out his feet and his legs yep. and he straightened up his spine. And I kid you not within days, mm -hmm. most all these problems cleared up. Yeah. 
And so your body is built to, to fight yeah. this stuff, but we've relied so much on pharmace pharmaceuticals and, and doctors. And don't get me wrong, we do need doctors. Of doctors are an essential part of your life. Yep. Yep. But um, your body can be that cure if you just allow it to. There's a great uh, movie, documentary, and a book. It's called Heal. Um, and it talks about how the body is set up to heal itself. We just have to get out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. And exactly. I, had, I had these issues with the adrenals, which caused issues with the thyroid, which I'm uh, healing myself. I'm getting my, myself out of the way. And all, my sister's a chiropractor, so I know where you're coming from. She's an acupuncturist as well. She's done it for 20 plus years. And so I, I was able to connect with that part of, you know, that natural healing piece where the, you know, the spine is the, the energy center. It's the, you know, they call it in Indian traditions, they call it the Shashumna where the energy vibrates around the spine. And then you have the chakras and all that. And we, you know, this is a discussion that, you know, my sister would be able to discuss more than I, but I have a, uh, an overview of, of it and have studied it some in, in the uh, past 25 years. But if we can just figure out ways to get out of our own way, that's the problem. If you cut yourself, the thing heals. Mm -hmm. If you break a bone and a doctor sets it, it does heal. The body is set up to heal itself and, and ultimately so is the mind. But what I realized is I had to heal my mind of some of the belief systems that I had that ultimately caused me to be ill. You know, um, the stress, stress is a major reason oh for God, yeah. people being ill. From what I've read, nine out of 10 doctor visits are caused by stress related conditions. I know for me, it was part of my life and, and stress was the reason why I got sick back in the day. And it's, it's a, uh, prevalent in our society. We think it's normal. You know, I, I talk to attorneys about this almost every day. There's this undercurrent for most people where you have this fight or flight anxiety that never goes away. And to me, it's almost criminal that we don't know more about how this works. One of the reasons I'm bringing some of this information out of the world is because I figured out how to stop stress before it started in me and putting together the stress less information that I've got with the heart math. So what I've done is created the stress less course, and it, it includes an hour of the heart math to get you started on looking at stress from a different place. I call it a different perspective because what I've found is stress is an inside job. We're doing it to ourselves mm -hmm. by the way we think, by our belief systems, by our perceptions, and you can shut that off. It takes practice. It takes, you know, habitual patterns of instilling new thoughts and information, which sometimes people push back on, you know, they don't want to learn new things because their ego mind has them stuck in. You're okay. You're fine. Even though they're scared shitless and they're, they're living in this fight or flight that doesn't ever end. And it's a, it's, it is an endemic that is only getting worse with what's happening right now in the world. So part of my message, part of my mission, Kyle, is to bring some of these other ideas out there to help people to pick and choose what they think might work for them. I want to ask your opinion on something. Now, do you think that doctors are quick to label people like with all these different uh, like, oh, no, the different depression and all these other things? So people think oh my god this is me this is my life from now on so they're stuck in that mode and they don't think that they can get out of it you know like like myself they told me well you have you have depression you have anxiety you have ptsd okay but that's not that's not what defines me that's not who i am so even though i'm prone to feeling depressed from time to time and of course anxieties but isn't that just a natural part of your life that you can take care of well it's interesting you you bring that up because my dealings with doctors that started in law school i had these palpitations happening in the heart from mm -hmm. the stress okay and i go to the michigan state clinic after getting out of the hospital with a panic attack and what what a lot of doctors do will just label they'll label you based on symptoms 
-hmm. They're not taking into account you as a person, what you've been through, what's possible for you. And we can't fault them because they're only as good as how they've been educated. Right. Okay. And there are people that do really well on pharmaceutical drugs. We're, we're not talking down on doctors because my God, we need them in every area. Oh, but of what, what the medical profession does best is emergency medicine. One of the things that's starting to happen is that the, the quantum physics and some of this mind body stuff is starting to seep into the medical profession. They keep pushing on it, pushing it away. But once I got to a place where I started developing these heart arrhythmias uh, that were literally caused by the adrenal glands being just so beat to crap over the years from stress, um, they labeled me. And this doctor, I remember sitting in his office and he was an arrhythmia doctor, specialized in arrhythmia. And he looked at me and I was like 28 years old. And he goes, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. You're going to have to be on medicine for the rest of your life. And this medicine that you're on now is working now, but then it'll stop working. You have to go on another medicine. And, and I looked at him and I said, well, what are the side effects of this medicine? And he didn't really know. So I pulled up the phys physician's desk reference and I started looking at some of the stuff and your skin could turn blue. This, that, I'm like, what? You so, can turn to a Smurf? <laughs> I, maybe, maybe. But I started looking at these side effects and I was having side effects. Now people will laugh. But the medicine that they put me on in law school, my hair fell out. Well, it's never grown back. And everybody in my family has their hair. So to me, the hair on my back now, this is kind of, you know, personal. Uh, I had hair on my back. It fell out, you know, and I'm, I'm calling up the, the, the doctor. It was an internist. And I said, is this normal? He goes, I don't know. Let me look at the phys physician's desk reference. And I'm like, how it's do you not know? the side effects of the drugs you're prescribing. So yes, we get labeled. I got labeled with this. I stopped taking the medicine shortly after that and started looking at ways I could self heal. Uh, and I still do have some arrhythmias every once in a while because there is a function in the heart uh, of the nerves in the heart that aren't right. And they wanted to go in and burn the nerves out. I'm like, no, 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 no. I used ways to self heal. Uh, and I continue to do that every day with visualization process and getting out of my way in terms of belief systems around the body. But yes, we are labeled and then we accept that label wholeheartedly and we give all of our power away. And I'm not saying not to take what doctors say to take, right? We're not talking about that. You have to make your own decision. And what I like to teach people is use your own intuition. What's best for you? Get all the advice you can and then make the decision for you. But for me, I didn't want to be labeled with that. Ultimately, I didn't want to be labeled with the, the young attorney that has panic attacks and he needs to be on some kind of brain altering drugs. Um, and I just started to look to other places, to other modalities to say that label is a label based on. I came in with these symptoms. Here's the drug that will, you know, help you. They're never cures. Get that. Medical science is never giving us cures. They're giving us band-aids for the mm -hmm. problem. So yeah. if we can just open people's minds up today to realize that you can take your own power back, make decisions that are best for you, whatever that means, whatever that is. If that means, you know, uh, chemotherapy when you have cancer, you do it. Whatever that means for you personally. But look to see what else is out there that could possibly help you to shift out of whatever you're going through. Now, mind you, I want you to approach this as an opinion. I don't want to make anybody out there, you know, think, oh, this is the absolute truth. No, there's it, no, may, yeah. it may be, but do you think that we should approach things like depression and, and these other labels uh, more like, say, a, a cold or the flu? That's something that's temporary. Maybe we need some kind of medication to help us get through it, but shouldn't we approach it as that instead of, oh my God, I'm going to have this the rest of my life? Well, as soon as you say you're depressed, what happens in your brain chemistry is you are depressed. Mm -hmm. Therein lies the challenge. So people do need some of these things to help them through tough spots. Some people should be on medicine for the rest of their lives. But to me, I wanted to figure out what was best for me personally. And it's like one of the reasons I don't talk about politics or even sports 
<laughs> religion <laughs> because everybody thinks they're right. Well, and ultimately, these doctors believe in what they're doing. God help them. They're, they're doing the best they can. But for you to have a label, let's take a step back from that and say, I may be depressed, but do I really suffer from depression? And that label is depression. I, am, I suffer from depression. Maybe you're just depressed. So are there modalities out there that can assist you with the mind-body connection, which we know is you know, very strong and there's lots of teachings out there. I mean, there's tons of people out there teaching this kind of stuff and I'm not an expert in that other than what I've done for myself, but I want people to understand that there may be solutions for them that are outside of the purview of here's these symptoms and you fit into this box. Every single person's different, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this is our, our DNA. No one's DNA is the same. Our fingerprints aren't the same. So as a result, how do we all fit in these patterns that cho we choose what someone else is telling us to do as far as, you know, it, and, and, and it, it's all opinions. I mean, get that. I realized that as an attorney early on, you know, people would come into me and say, you know, I want a second opinion on what this other lawyer told me. And I'm like, okay, uh, let's look at your case. And ultimately my biggest challenge with lawyers are let's litigate, let's go beat them. And, you know, let's, let's sue. And I wasn't about that. I was about, let's figure out how we might be able to bring everybody together. My opinion Mm -hmm. Your opinion, everybody's opinion is subjective. What does that mean? It means it's based on our belief systems, our values, our mission in life, our purpose in life, our familial beliefs, and all the stuff we talked about, you know, at the beginning where our beliefs are really formed when we're 14 years old and you're mm -hmm. living someone else's life. And I realized when I learned that, I didn't want to come from a place of living my parents' lives. You know, I wanted to come from a place of what does Adam want to believe? What I believed is wholeheartedly different than what they believed because I didn't want to accept the patterns of belief systems that were permeating through my family. And so what do you want to believe about your health? What do you want to do about your health? For me, it's the heart. This is why heart math drew me in right? Because my heart was telling me, Kyle, when I had these arrhythmias and I was having, you know, early on in law school, I was having these palpitations, my heart was telling me something's wrong with what's happening. You've got to make changes. I listened to it. And ultimately, I used it to bring me to different teachings and ideas that have helped me tremendously. And that's one of the reasons I'm here talking about the power of the heart with you today, because you want to give people different perspectives, yes. some up, uplifting information that's not mainstream. Let's talk about all the crap going on. No, we're here talking about the possibilities. What's possible for every person listening here is up to them and what they're focused on and how they continue to focus their lives, their thoughts. And to me, Heart math is a great modality to help people to get out of the head, sink down into the heart, connect the two uh, organs together. Beautiful power there. They call it coherence. When you're, when you're connecting the heart and the mind, there's so much power there. And in the end, to me, our heart, not our gut, you know, they say, oh, the gut feeling now. The gut has about 3,000 neural cells in it. The heart has 40,000, upwards of 40,000 neural cells. These are brain type cells that have, they've shown the heart has its own consciousness. It has its own energy center. Oh. And in these studies with heart math and lots of other organizations, they've shown the connection of the heart and the brain to be instantaneously calming to us. And that's what drew, drew me to it. And I wanted to introduce that idea. Um, the principles to your audience. Well, we could sit here and have a philosophical talk for hours. I, because I, I, I believe in some of these shamans that are out there. You know, I think we've demonized them and kind of labeled them as snake oil salesmen, but there's a lot of truth that they, they will peddle. And, uh, but that's, that's another podcast. <laughs> But probably right. another guest because I'm right there with you. Uh, maybe we find you a shaman to interview. I mean, look, I actually I have, have had. I have, you, have you? Mm -hmm. I've I have read 
thousands and thousands of books on every single type of topic. I've listened to lots of these CDs over the years. Nightingale Conant was a big one for me over the years. And there was a, a program on, sh you know, be your own shaman. Mm -hmm. That really comes down to what is the truth for you? And Educate I think that's yourself. What, that's what it, it is. I think that's the main topic we're, we've covered today in the, in the short time we've been together is what is Kyle's truth? What is Susie's truth? What do you want to believe for you? That's what I'm really here to open people up to is that you have an opportunity to start to change what you believe. Uh, Greg Braden's got some really great books out there. If you want to learn more about shifting your beliefs, the biology of belief by Bruce Lipton, great biologist, uh, teacher, um, love him. One of my favorite teachers, both Greg Braden and Bruce Lipton. They, they have really glommed on and studied this beliefs create your reality. And it's drawn me to, to create a course, which I haven't done yet because I'm putting it all together, but it's understanding that your truth is your own and, and really owning the power behind that, I think is the message today, whether, you know, you have an illness or a, a challenge mentally, what's the truth for you and what do you want to do about it? Right. Yeah. And the thing is, and this is my opinion on it is yes, we do have certain truths that are right for us. Um, you can, you could share that with others, but you can't push what you believe onto other people and think it's going to work for them as well. I mean, it could, that's the whole, the whole thing is you, you give people alternative ways of, of thinking and see what works for you. Um, one of the things I realized practicing law with dealing with the litigation aspects and uh, people fighting with each other mm -hmm. is, and I, and I wrote a book for attorneys, it's called Raising the Bar, and I really want attorneys to get this at a deep level. Everyone, because everyone has their own truth, there is no right or wrong. There isn't. Science continually changes what it says about what is truth in the scientific community. Look at the difference 50 years has made in the scientific community, mm -hmm. massive changes. And then with the advent of quantum physics in the thirties, that blew everything open to where, oh my God, we don't know crap. We don't know anything going on really. So one of the things I, I, I pitch in, in my book is no one's right or wrong. The only way we, we think we're right or wrong is we judge something. Exactly. Judging is a subjective thing that is individual to each person. So I think the message, uh, another message of, of what we're talking about right now is nobody's right or wrong. And the only reason somebody thinks that they're right or wrong or somebody else is wrong is because we're looking at them saying, no, I don't, I don't believe what you, you're saying and I'm not buying into what you're talking about. Exactly. But when I looked at litigation under a microscope and I said, something's wrong with our system. You know, the civil system of litigation, criminal, don't even go there. I don't even want to go there because that's just <laughs> what, that's even, that's another whole problem, which there's people out there trying to solve those problems. But um, in the book, I say, nobody's right or wrong. And there's no truth that's evident for everyone. There isn't that. There's no capability of saying you're right and I'm wrong. That's a judgment call. That's an opinion. And so why don't we try to bridge the gap? You know, bridge the gap with two two parties arguing, you know, before they get to litigation. And there's beautiful work being done by attorneys right now um, where they're bridging that gap. There's divorce lawyers that have stopped practicing law the way that they did before. Uh, and they're now coming into a collaborative space where there's no husband and wife attorneys. There's a collaboration of people helping folks come to a resolution. So when yes. you really step back and say, nobody's right or wrong, they just believe they are, you can step into someone else's shoes and see where they're coming from. That's what collaborative lawyers and integrative is also on the upswing here. And some of it's been around for 20, 30 years. Um, integrative law. And it, what it is, is, is stepping in someone else's shoes and, and seeing where they're coming from. If you can understand where someone's coming from, you can realize what drove them to a place that they're in now. And just having some compassion and empathy for someone else. Yes. Is something that we just don't do in today's world. So as a result, maybe we all need to be a little more compassionate.
right? I agree. I agree. Well, the way I look at it, if you are not part of the solution, then you are part of the problem. And if you're trying to cause more problems and more division, yeah. instead of bringing people together, that's where we're going wrong as society. And I, I personally think there's only a small minority of people that are part of that problem. And generally, most people want to get along. They, they want to, to be able to go out and talk to their neighbor without them getting into a fight. I see it when I go into town. Everybody that I meet just wants to, to be heard. They want yeah. to talk. And they get they've been locked up for so long yeah. that human interaction is what they they need, but we have built up to this moment. So I'm going to ask you: Can we do an exercise of what you're talking about? We're going to do a simple heart breath, which is the basis of heart math, but it's not heart math's you know inf information. So what I'd like to do is just walk us through. Uh, just okay. simple heart-based breathing. Tony Robbins, I mean, millions of teachers out there teach this and, and not a lot of people have heard of it. So let's close our eyes and let's direct our attention. Let's just put all of our attention in the heart space and let's focus in just on our breath, the in and out of the breath. In this practice, we're beginning to take our attention out of the mind and put it somewhere in the body. So let's just do that 30 seconds, focus all your attention on your in breath and out breath. And if your mind wanders gently, don't get upset with it. Don't get upset with your mind. Gently bring it back. Let's do that now. How'd that feel, Kyle? Uh, relaxing. I know you've done meditation, so you know, you're, you're not a newbie to this, but there's two things that I think really impact our health, which I know from me is, is huge. One, we don't breathe deeply enough. So when you practice with this breath, focusing on the breath, start at the belly and pull all the air, fill the lungs completely. One of the reasons we're so tired is one, we don't have enough oxygen going through our bodies because most of us live inside and we don't get outside and exercise enough, but we don't breathe deeply enough. And when people are stressed out, they breathe so shallowly, you're not getting enough oxygen. So um, Wim Hof, have you ever heard of him? I can't say that I, I have. He, he's interesting. He's the, he's, they call him the ice man. And I've studied him. I've been in one of his programs. It's very interesting. And one of the things he introduces is just full lung breathing. And to me, you know, he's getting in ice baths and all this stuff. And Tony Robbins is a fan of him. There's tons of people that are fans of him. Wim, W-I-M-H-O-F-F. -F. He's a European guy. I think he's it's not Denmark. It's one of the countries right around Denmark. Um, he talks about taking cold showers, not because you're, you know, excited <laughs> physically, but <laughs> taking cold, taking cold showers because it helps the adrenals and, um, but his breath work is very interesting. He's, he's got an app you can download for free. Check that out. But one of the things that he, that he teaches is full long breathing. And it's genius. It's simple, you know, but we don't do this. So if you start getting stressed, you start getting tired, full long breaths, focusing in on the breathing, and that will help oxygenate the body. The other thing that I've learned over the years is we're dehydrated. Most of us are drinking sodas, you know, coffee, tea all day long. We're dehydrated and we're mm -hmm. eating shit. We're eating junk food. I'm sorry, maybe you want to bleep that out. I, I say that. That's okay. Sometimes. That's okay. <laughs> um, it is me. It's me, right? So um, less coffee, teas, junk food, more water, right? Lemon water really powerful. It's, I start my day with uh, a big gold glass of lemon water and I drink water all day long. I mean, here, here's, 
here's lemon water right here. Um, and just start looking at what you eat more. Because if you're tired, you're probably eating like crap and you're not drinking enough water and then you're not breathing enough. So if you find yourself stressed, take some deep, full breaths and it can help you almost instantaneously feel better most of the time, unless, you know, you've got a cold or God forbid the flu or COVID, you know, but um, part it's part of, of dealing with COVID is having some strong lungs, getting out there, exercising, get out into the world. I hike with my dogs every day. I love getting out, getting some fresh air. So just some simple tips. I'm not a doctor or, uh, you know, psychologist, but this is stuff that's worked for me and it's, it's all opinions, right, Kyle? Everything. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I believe that there should be alternatives out there to, to help you with these different ailments. Yep. Um, I mean, you've got natural stuff that you can use to help, like with the, the heart disease and things like that. Garlic, cinnamon, yep. you know, all these different herbs and things like that. Uh, by the way, uh, you should see my, my garden out back. I've got all these fresh herbs and vegetables and things. I'm very excited. My cauliflower is actually starting to, to grow now. And, well, you're uh, in Texas. You can grow stuff pretty much year round, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do have our bouts of freezes, but, you know, you go out and you cover it and you're okay. But um, all these natural things, I cook garlic in almost everything mm -hmm. that, I, that I make. And it's made such a difference with my cholesterol and things like that. Cinnamon, that's another thing that helps. Um, and here's a, what's amazing is when I go through those bouts where I don't drink enough water, and then all of a sudden I start drinking water again, I could feel all that crap leaving my body. And I almost get a, a it's a, almost a high drinking water. Well, you couple the water with more oxygen. Mm -hmm. I've done breath work to where I, I sat for 60 minutes and did just full, full out circular breaths. I mean, you feel like you're high and I haven't done many drugs in my life other than smoke a little pot way back in the day. But man, it, it, it's like a revelation to have enough oxygen in your system. Mm -hmm. So one of the things uh, that we can throw out there to people if they have chronic illness is a, a guy, uh, Anthony William, his name is, and, and he's called the medical medium. Um, lots of good tips. It's a little out there. He channels his spirit uh, of compassion. Um, but the things he talks about are some of the same things I learned in Tony Robbins workshops years ago around, you know, eating more raw fruits and vegetables and mm -hmm. hydrating. And, and, and so if you have a chronic illness, there's lots of answers there. Uh, you know, one of the things around my thyroid challenge was that the doctors wanted to cut the thyroid out or burn it out with iodine. And I'm like, uh, no. And so then I found his book, Thyroid Healing talks about the reasons why and, you know, do this and eat better and do a cleanse and integrate more, you know, these smoothies and stuff. And it really made a big impact on my life. So if anybody out there is suffering from chronic illness, you may want to look, look at uh, what he's teaching. Now, one thing I want to throw out there real quick, turmeric, turmeric yep. helps a lot. It's like what I have arthritis and things like that. All these things help. So Look in, I mean, of course, take advice from your doctor. I am not a doctor. Yeah. I'm not going to tell Neither you to not listen to your doctor. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh, there are natural things you can do to, to help. To and, supplement, to buttress, to add, to be more positive. Mm -hmm. uh, turmeric, I take it too. Uh, curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric, uh, which I have some capsules. You know, my sister has turned me on to all these different things over the years. And turmeric is a mass, uh, massive anti-inflammatory um, from what I've read and learned. And so, you know, it's something that everybody should consider if you've got uh, any kind of inflammatory problems going on in the body. Yeah, I think elderberry is good elderberry too. Elderberry is good too. Yep. I learned how to make my own elderberry syrup, medical medium. They, he teaches you how to make your own elderberry syrup where you, you take honey and elderberries and cinnamon, and it, it's great for uh, cold and flu season for sure. Oh, yeah. Local honey, oh. that helps you with allergies, allergies and all kinds of things. So, yeah, get, if you're going to get honey, get local. Buy if you local. can, for sure, for sure, mm. for sure. Well, you know, we are run out of time. No problem. Now, I mean, we could talk for hours here, Kyle. This has been fun. Thank you for having me on.
Oh, thank you for your time. I appreciate your wisdom. And I, I, yeah. I hope you can come back in the future because I think sure. we've got a whole nother podcast we could do. Sure. And so um, please, as soon as we get done, send over all your links. Yep. So I can put those into the description. And um, not only thank you for your time, but if you're new to the channel, thank you for coming by and yeah. please come back. Your support is so much needed. And for those of you that are regular to the channel, I, I really appreciate your dedication. And without you, we just wouldn't be able to do what we do. And this uh, is it. I liked you on Facebook. I'm seeing everything you're doing now. And if you're on Facebook, like the podcast because he's got lots Thank of you. guests lined up. He and I talked last a couple of weeks ago about all the guests lined up and you got some really cool people coming on. So thank you for the work you do, Kyle. We oh, appreciate it. I'm There's humbled. more people like you in the world that need to step up and, and do what you're doing, bringing in more positivity and helping people and giving them a different point of view. So thank you for all of what you're doing. Appreciate thank it. You. Well, unfortunately, negativity seems to be the cell nowadays. So we need to bring more positivity into the world. And, and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I don't care what religion you are. I, all those things that that's not who you are. What's in your heart is who you are. And that's, that's who I'm trying to cater to. And so um, please continue to um, support the channel. My growth is just, gone crazy lately uh we're on a good pace right now and uh let's get the word out there please share this out to everyone you know yeah. and so until the next one everyone please take care god bless and peace we hope you enjoyed this episode of listen to the vibes you can catch us on buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on youtube follow us on facebook at the vibes broadcast network 